<laughs> this is part two of a series of terrifying skinwalker stories. Let's finish this countdown. Maybe trying to hit it wasn't the best idea. My father owns a small delivery service that operates out of Farmington. We mostly deliver small packages to the middle of nowhere that are too much of a hassle for the larger delivery companies to bother with. My dad is the only employee, and we have a few pickup trucks and a trailer. We get a delivery one day to Window Rock, Arizona, on the Navajo Reservation, about two hours from Farmington. My dad gets the call for the job while he is chilling with his Navajo friend, Travis, and his girlfriend. Travis mentions how he's got family in Window Rock that he hasn't seen in ages and suggests they go with him. I was about six or seven at the time, and it was the summertime, so dad decides we'll go down together. He can do his delivery really quickly, and while Travis sees his family, we can go check out the window rock, a big rock face with a large hole in it that goes to the other side, pretty cool. We had to convoy in separate trucks since my dad's was loaded down with freight. We decided to bring along some talkie-talkies so we could communicate with one another. We spend our time in window rock. Everything is generally uneventful, and we start heading home along the old highway with my dad and I in front, and Travis and his girlfriend in their truck behind us. I honestly don't remember most of the window rock trip, but this next part I will never forget. We're somewhere on the highway between Window Rock and Gallup, NM. It had just rained earlier in the day and the road was kind of slick, so we were taking it pretty slowly. On the left side of the highway there is nothing but sandstone cliffs, and on the right, there is a huge field separated from the road by a small barbed wire fence. We crest the top of this hill, and down at the bottom of the hill, we see what appears to be a very large dog, sitting back on its haunches in the middle of the road, facing the cliffs. My dad calls over the radio. Hey Trav, do you see that big ass dog? Travis starts yelling back over the radio, that is not a dog. Speed up right now and hit it. He sounds almost hysterical. He just keeps screaming, hit it. JJ, you have to hit it. Please, please, hit that fucking thing right now. So my dad starts to speed up, and as we get a bit closer, I can begin to see it a little more clearly. It's covered in this brown, wiry, matted hair that appears to have dried blood all over it. It's still facing the cliffs, but the moment our headlights hit it, it turns and looks at us, and it is a face. I don't know how else to describe it other than as a mix between a bear's and a human's face. It looks twisted and distorted, almost in pain. As we get closer to this thing, we start to realize it's actually fucking huge. It was still sitting on its haunches, but it was about shoulder height with the truck's hood. We were literally inches from hitting it when it let out this scream that sounded like someone screaming as their lungs were filling with water, and it leapt backwards, towards the field, landing just on our side of the barbed wire fence. Then, with another leap, it was gone from sight. Travis comes over the radio again, holy shit, keep driving. We have to get out of here. We have to go faster. He kept repeating that last part. We have to get out of here, and we have to go faster. Pretty soon, we were speeding like crazy, and just as we started to come near the outskirts of Gallup, we got pulled over. Then Travis pulls his truck over with us. Naturally, this makes the cop, a Navajo man himself, very on edge, and he immediately asks why Travis felt the need to pull over as well. Travis says, we just saw a skinwalker a few miles back and it's been following us. The officer immediately turns white, stammers something about a verbal warning, gets in his car and takes off. We do the same. We didn't see anything else that night, but when we got home, Travis refused to let us leave without taking some kind of Navajo totem thing that was supposed to keep it away. Once I saw a skinwalker. As many of you might already know, many Navajo people, including my own family, are very reluctant to speak about skinwalkers because it is believed to attract their attention. Well, I, however, grew up away from the Navajo Nation and was very naive about the subject. When it came to skinwalkers, I was an absolute skeptic. My mom used to tell a story about how, back in the 80s, when she lived with her siblings and my grandparents, still in Shiprock, but on the southern outskirts, she and my aunt saw a skinwalker just outside their driveway under a street light. She described it as a black dog with dirty fur, a twisted noodle-like front leg, and these unnatural eyes with a soft burnt orange glow. I, being my own closed-minded self, doubted every word, but I never said my doubts aloud. But. These doubts totally changed last year when I went to my grandparents' house in October. My family and I had just finished scouring the carnival at the Navajo Nation Fair and called it a night. The house was close enough that we could walk home in just 10 minutes, so we did. 
When we got there, it was about 9 at night, and we stayed up until about 2, catching up on family affairs and the local news. It was during that time that I just decidedly opened my mouth and blurted out the question, Hey, are skinwalkers real? Guys? I asked. You shouldn't be speaking about that. My grandma said, with almost a disturbed yell in her voice. So she and my grandfather both decided to go to bed. After being scolded by my mom, one of my aunts chimes in with a very cautious tone and says, They're really all right. I had a few start screaming outside of my trailer in Farmington just a few nights ago. Your cousin had nightmares the whole night and woke up crying that morning. Not wanting to push the discomfort any further, we all decided to go to bed. Now the trailer slash home is pretty old and it was a really nice night, so we slept with the windows open with screens to prevent bugs from coming in. Everyone had drifted off to sleep except me, because my mind was still going a million miles a minute about skinwalkers and I wondered if I would ever encounter one while here on the reservation, as a kid I was told it was taboo to think about skinwalkers because it could still call their attention. That's when the SHT totally hit the fan. Just as I was settling in and finally getting relaxed for sleep, I started to hear something moving outside. I get up from the couch and start wandering over to the kitchen window. In the trailer, all of the rooms have their lights out, so the only visible light that can be seen is from the porch light out front. I was thankful for this because I told myself if it really was a skinwalker outside, then hopefully it wouldn't notice me seeing it. So I muster up the courage and take a quick scan of the outside. From the porch light, all I can see is the dusty ground and the vehicles that my family drove along with some old metal trash cans that stood beside the road. I looked for about 5 seconds and wasn't able to see anything, so I was getting ready to turn around and walk back to bed, thinking it was just a stray cat or something. I have only taken two steps when I hear what sounds like a distorted scream coming from outside, definitely close by. Fearful, I look outside once more, and there it is. A coyote-like figure was staring at me from behind the cars, just outside of the reach of the porch light. Only it looked awfully wrong and gave off an evil vibe just by seeing it. It was gray with very disheveled hair, and a horrible orange-red soft glow came from its eyes. I noped the hell out and ran back to the bedroom. It was at this moment that I began to also notice an awful stench in the air that smelled like rotting meat. I started trying to wake up my mom, who was like, Mom, that's almost 3 a.m., what do you want? I immediately began, in a shaken voice, there's something scary outside. Then she said, now annoyed because I woke her up, up, oh, it's probably just a stray animal or something. It's the res, animals wander all the time at night. She obviously wasn't getting the drift of what I was saying, so I screamed, there's some Blair Witch Project SHT going on outside. M.A. That got her attention. What? What the hell are you talking about? She said. And we heard it. The thing outside started making more of its dreadful like screams, and started what sounded like thrashing outside on the ground. Hear that? That's what I'm talking about. So both her and I got back up, looked outside the window, and the coyote thing was making its way to the door. It walked with an odd limp and dragged its back right leg as if it was handicapped. We could hear it start to scratch against the door and make this odd muffled moaning sound. My mom went and got my dad and they both started shouting in Navajo all sorts of words, telling the thing to go away and saying it's not welcome here. Well, all this commotion was enough to get the rest of the trailer up as they came out into the hallway. The only thing my mom did was turn to them and say skin walker while proceeding to point to the door, noise is still happening. Apparently, they already knew exactly what to do, as my grandfather got a handgun from a drawer and a bag of ashes. He coated a few bullets, loaded them into the gun, and went straight to the door. Yelling out more Navajo that was too fast for me to comprehend, he swung open the door and fired twice. Nothing. The thing managed to escape before my grandpa could put a bullet in it. That's the fastest one I've ever seen, said my grandpa. Next thing you know my aunts and my parents are freaking out about what just happened, saying things like, what if it comes back tomorrow? and it saw us, does that mean we're targets now? Afterwards, my grandparents calmed everyone down, myself included, saying we'd be fine and we all went to bed, around 3-ish. Morning comes and my grandparents call one of their neighbors to explain what happened. Apparently, one of them was a medicine man who used to partake in Ye Bai Che's, Navajo ceremonies used for healing and curing sickness, and came over to bless each family member and the grounds outside. The Yenoblushi has found me. My grandmother on my mother's side has always been very superstitious. For lack of a better word, she's not religious. But she does believe in a lot of paranormal stuff. Her mother was a full-blooded Navajo and her father was Irish. Either way, she'd never been anywhere east of Montana, and she grew up in Nevada. One year, 
when I was in grade school, we went to visit her. Most of the visit was pretty uneventful, typical boring old people stuff. Except she always kept her curtains drawn shut and would always peek out the window. When someone asked what she was doing, she would simply reply, Yet old Lushy is watching me. This went on for nearly the entire visit until a few days before we were due to leave. My grandma and my then baby brother, he's 19 now lol, were in the front yard that evening. Planting flowers when all of a sudden, my grandmother starts shouting, insert little brother's name here. Get away from that creature. It's not safe. Of course, being in Nevada, we all assumed that my brother had found a scorpion or a rattlesnake, so we all ran outside to see my grandmother clutching my little brother and shaking in terror against the side of the house. Standing out in the yard was a large black Great Dane-sized dog. It was staring at my grandmother with an intensity I'd never seen before. It looked up at us, gave a little huff, and bounded off. I don't remember if it moved unusually fast or not, but I do remember it had really deep yellow eyes. When my mother asked my grandmother what had happened, she kept repeating, The Yenilboshi has found me. She moved a couple weeks after that, a coyote walking on two legs. I was told this story once. My dad isn't a bullshitter or a liar, so I know the story is true. So, this was the very early 80s, and my sister, who lived in Toronto, came down to visit our parents for the weekend. She was staying at a friend's house, who loaned her a car so she could come out. After her visit, she left a little after 9 p.m. She got maybe 7 to 8 miles away when the car broke down. Thankfully, she broke down in front of a friend of the family house. They let her in to call her dad, and dad came to get her. The family said she could leave the car in their driveway for the night, and my sister decided to just stay at my parents' house for the night. It was now a little after 10 p.m. and pitch black, late November, while my sister and dad were driving back to the house and they passed through a heavily wooded area. Out of nowhere they hear this incredibly fucking loud and human scream that was heard over the engine, them talking and the radio. Dad slammed on the brakes and they both started freaking out, when suddenly a six-foot-tall coyote walking on two legs with a black-slash-white strip tail appeared on the side of the road and proceeded to walk in front of the car. As soon as it passed, that same scream was played again, only this time 10x louder. Dad slammed on the accelerator and they got the fuck out of there. It was never seen again. There were two skinwalkers. On the Ghost Stories blog, Darkness Prevails, user John shared his story of how a relaxing midnight stroll turned terrifying when he came face-to-face -face with two skinwalkers. According to his chilling story, John was out late one summer night. While listening to music and enjoying the cool weather, he walked near a large empty field that was adjacent to a college campus. Suddenly, he felt something staring at him. Shining his flashlight out into the darkness, he saw two sets of glowing orange eyes staring back at him. The eyes were at least seven feet off the ground and stared at him without blinking once. John made a mad dash for safety. As he was running, he turned back to see one of the creatures chasing him. John became even more frightened when he got a better glimpse of the fast-moving creature behind him that looked like a giant wolf. Quickening his pace, John reached his home safely, but he remains fearful of the monsters he saw that night, which he believes were skinwalkers.